Hi there. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that has been watching my videos and my analysis. I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Right now, I want you to do something for me as you are watching this video. One thing, like, share, and subscribe. And if you're also new on this channel, please go and like our Facebook page and follow it, JCTV Africa. We lost our JCTV Zimbabwe page to hackers, so we are now using JCTV Africa. Help that page to grow so that we can reach many people. You know that I bring here unbiased analysis. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'm seeing the numbers are growing and let's keep on growing so that we reach many people in 2023. We want to reach as many people as we can and let's try to make sure that this page grows, this channel grows and we also bring in more resources. That's what we want to do. Back to the topic of the day. I want to ask, is Chamisa tribalistic? I don't believe so. Chamisa seems to be, be on a trajectory of uniting the Zimbabweans at large. I know some people feel that are grieved because of what happened during the time of Gukraund, but those are the works of ZANU-PF. Those are not the works of the MDC or the Triple C. So I believe that for Zimbabwe to find itself, they need to allow a leader and not muddling him with the uh, with the past of ZANU-PF. I think it would be very fair for them to allow Nelson Chamisa to use his populace oust this current government by the votes and then we can allow the other processes to then that can unify the Zimbabwean nation to then take place. So I believe the man is not tribalistic and Tokozan Kupe is not being targeted because of a tribe. That is a fact. Others have actually come to me and said that why are you allowing, why did you allow the likes of Fadzai Maheri, the likes of Chief Ndiwen uh, to be to be in Triple C? Why are you forgiving the likes of Kudam Sasiwa? Right. I want to state my facts. The reason why it is difficult for people to allow somebody like Tokozan Kupe over the likes of Fadzai Maheri. Let's look at these scenarios. Tokozan Kupe voted the, uh, for the amendment bill which allows Justice Malaba to extend his years. We know what happened in 2018. You know what happened in 2018. So these laws, the amendment of the laws that was allowed by Tokozan Kupe as a Senate to vote, it is detriment to the people of Zimbabwe. It will take many years for them to then come back again and amend all those constitutions. You know how difficult it is for media houses to operate in Zimbabwe. Right now, there is no independent media that is broadcasting, that is broadcasting on the airwaves, except the media that is broadcasting on Facebook or on YouTube. There is no media that is on DSTV that is operating from Zimbabwe, which is independent, except ZTV. So if Togozan Kupi was for the will of the people not to dress her on emotions or egos or a, a revenge that she wanted to meet on Nelson Chamisa. Why did she vote with the ruling party? So that's why I have a problem. The likes of Fadzai Maheri, just like me, if you go on my timeline, you find that when the current president was president in 2018, I supported him when he went to Davos. I only started seeing the traits of betrayal just before the elections. And a lot of us heard that. The likes of Trevor Nube, the owner of um, Alpha Media Holdings, Newsday, they also supported and they were put in the advisory board. The likes of Shingim Nyeza, the likes of Wopo Shimono, everyone was naive. The likes of Ibo Mandaza, all of them, they were naive to think that this was the new future and they were saying let's give the man a chance yet he was given a chance 2017 2018 2019 2020 2021 there is no change instead things have deteriorated the teachers are earning peanuts the the dollar the so-called dollar that was one is to one has, has fallen when mugabe left how much was the uh, loaf of bread and up to now, how much is the loaf of bread? So you see this. 
everyone can agree that things have turned out to the worst. You and I who ran in the streets, or you and I who were on the Twitter streets or on Facebook street, you know, supporting to say we want Mugabe out. All of us, we are complicit in making sure that we wanted the new president. But what we didn't know is how is he going to change the fortunes of our country. So I believe that we must give people that opportunity to say they reformed while time was still there, like the likes of Advocate Father Maher, um, the likes of Hopo Shimon. When they saw that things were going south, they quickly jumped out and they said, look, this is not right, this is not this is unacceptable. But only now to Zan Kupi is now seeing that Zan PF is bad. But from 2018, she was causing Zan PF, she was voting with the likes of Douglas Monzora for bills that are going to affect you. So definitely we need to look at these issues without looking them from the lenses of any tribe. I don't believe that there is anything to do with tribe. Let us bury this issue and say Tokozano Kope needs to take a break from politics, find herself, come back. She can come back stronger and she still has that time to do that. And there is still an opportunity and she can come to the community and apologize to the community for what she did. And when she does that, I believe that that is a saving grace to come back into the leadership. She can be appointed as a minister. She can be appointed as in any position due to her intellectual capacity. But as for now, for her to be brought into this party, this will defragment the party from inside. And that will cause dissatisfaction in a lot of people. And I believe it is very, very important for people to not pull the tribe card whenever they feel that they are somebody because they are from Matebele land, they are being sidelined. That's my analysis. I believe that Tokozan Kupe and Nelson Chamisa, there is no tribal issues that are there. It has everything to do with their actions. She might be aggrieved because of what happened during the time of Morgan Shangirai, but this is a new baby now. If she had the leadership skills to lead MDCT, she could have led the MDCT and if she was for the people also, in 2018, there was a chance that her 45,000 votes and 143, 41,000 votes, if they were combined, they were going to force a runoff. And we wouldn't be in where we are today. But we are in where we are today because she chose the path of selfishness, of saying, because I was not addressed this way. So that is the fear of everyone, that you chose the path of ZANPF when you could have chose the path of the people. That's where the problem is. It is not. It has nothing to do with the tribe. So that's all that I have. I'm going to do another video. Please go and check out that video as we'll be talking about the political space of what is happening in Zimbabwe. In the meantime, please go and like our page, JCTV Africa, so that we can keep on giving you more updates and analysis and we can reach many people. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.